I make communities, sometimes as simply with a badge. I take the responsibility of building bridges between strangers with fun, colorful, interactive art. Because I believe art is not inaccessible. I'm driven to put the public back into public art, and I enjoy fostering the potential between people and places. I've made some art in some pretty unconventional places, like a library or a school, in a cemetery, a former prison, on protest signs, on a car, using trash cans, even soap dispensers, and University College London's portico, just up the street. All of these have served as vehicles to host my social sculptures. But what is a social sculpture? In the summer of 2012, in Peckham, London, a year after the riots there, I created Home, a public living room colored with individual participation. I engaged 2,000 individuals to place a sticker on the structure marking how long they'd lived in the community. Each color represented a time. So lime green was all my life, yellow up to one year, orange one to three years, etc. Now, in order for my projects to work, they have to serve as a platform for sharing. I start with an innocuous question, like how long have you lived here? Or what is home to you? And as an American, or more an American-sounding person living in London, I get asked this question all the time. And as I've lived here for six years, it's become a harder question to answer because it invites my personal story, my personal narrative. And not everywhere is a platform to share that. Other projects have invited conversations on economics, culture, sense of humor, and even death. And while there have been projects that I've asked up to a thousand people the exact same question, it's not always the answers that surprise me as much as the stories that people tell and the way in which they tell and share. I'm not obsessed with data or statistics or numbers. I really am trying to encourage people to relish the experience of sharing. And in Home, I recorded all these stories that people came out and told me about on MP3 players that I embedded in the structure so that neighbors and community members could hear those stories and share their thoughts on it as well. And with it, people gained a sense of pride and ownership over this beautiful structure they'd collectively made, but also they created a data visualization of their community. It gave them a new perspective of understanding who are the groups that make up their home, but also it gave them a chance to connect and meet other people face to face. Now, you don't need a beautiful structure in order to create connection. And in Poland, for the Krakow Arts Festival, I was asked to create a work. In Krakow, there's these, these pretzel trolleys all over town, and I decided to take one and use it to peddle button business, which is the project I came up with there. And in fact, I've brought a version of it here today. Button business, essentially, is taking blank, colorful badges and assigning them a role and asking individuals to identify. And I can see some of you have identified already, selecting a few. And the terms I brought today were reflective of the community I expected would come to TEDx. But in Poland, I took a research into the cultural understanding of who was there, and these are the terms I came up with. And so they're in Polish and English, um, in case you're not fluent in Polish. And I would go around town peddling these badges and ask people to select ones they most identified with. And at the end of the day, in a bar, you might see someone wearing a badge. And not only would you know that they had participated, but you would know they were thirsty for a beer. <laughs> or that a tourist helping the economy might have been taken advantage of or given a grand tour. Or that a bureaucrat might find himself in a deep political conversation with a complete stranger. And there were links being created across the city. There was a quiet understanding that people, strangers, were connecting with a sense of pride and joy. And I don't ask, my projects aren't driven about asking questions about gender or race, 
but they do connect people on a human and lifestyle level. We scan people all the time for visual cues to get better understandings of strangers, right? We look for religious pendants or wedding rings or a crutch, and somehow we feel like we know them a little bit better. But now I was asking people to scan strangers and then stop at the abstract innocent badge and inquire and want to know more. And if you already knew what it meant, get that little sense of joy that you understood something more about them or that they too had participated in the project you did as well. But this project isn't just for people who participated. All of you who now have a badge are now proud owners of an anecdotal accessory. You will go out into the world today and you may be scanned by a stranger who, if they are so bold, will ask that innocuous question, what is that badge? And you'll find yourself telling them about the TEDx talks or this talk or about the fact that you selected board on a Tuesday and what you really should have been doing on a Tuesday. And suddenly you'll be having conversations about politics or culture or food or how is community formed. And now you've enlarged in the community of people who understand the badge and you've connected potentially with a stranger, all because of this little colorful thing. But this is used as a tactic in advertising and political campaigns all the times, right? Like sports jerseys have logos and political parties have colors, but they're selling you an agenda. They're selling you something very specific and they're taking your information and not, you have no idea where it's going or to what benefit. I have a much more open-ended agenda. I want to take your information and show it to you and show it to others immediately. So critically, my agenda is much more transparent. And this is something that is of value today. You see, civil servants have realized the power of public art. It can create a destination. It can further pride as well as safety in a neighborhood. And sometimes it drives up property prices. So it's an aid to public policy, but it is not a replacement. So when I was asked by Fairfax Arts Council in Fairfax, Virginia, in America, to create a pedestrian-friendly work for the future city of Tysons, which as it stands now is littered with parking lots and highways and a few buildings in between, but not much more, I knew it was a challenge. So I went out and I engaged with individuals. I created a platform for sharing. And in a place that seemingly had no community, I found masses of individuals hungry to connect. And using my colors and patterns, I created tiles that represented individuals' thoughts on their ideas of community as well as future aspirations for culture for Tyson's. And every single person's information, multiple choice questions, were coded into answers um, that were matched, and people could come and find themselves in the project. And this all culminated in Tyson's tiles. I had transformed a corner of a parking lot into an artwork that represented lots of individuals, but brought forth community. Because people didn't just see this as a corner of a parking lot, they saw it as a garden, as a place for meditation, as a place for yoga, where children could come and play, where you could have a business lunch or a romantic rendezvous, or just a colorful break from the mundaneness of your office or car where you could come and connect with a stranger or a loved one. Tyson's tiles illustrated that there is a community in Tyson's and that if a future wants to be developed there, they have to be consulted. Their thoughts and ideas on culture and community have to be part of the conversation. Now, many of my projects are temporary, but they illustrate places that were once ignored. They give data visualizations of a community, giving them new insights on shared values and also diversity present right in front of them. But they also give them experiences, lived experiences that generate individual memories as well as communal legacy. I make colorful, interactive, data visualizing, fun artwork. Some call it pretty, but to me, they're social sculptures and they make 
community. Thank you.